first of all, welcome to uh, everyone who's joined us here. And uh, let us, um, uh, I, I really want to thank you also, Igor, for the music that you just provided us shortly in this uh, little film. I, I joined or I came to the Teme project after, um, uh, after, after the residency was over, it was completed. And I dove, I dove into the documentation of what had happened into the individual development plans that were made and the log books of the participants. I interviewed some of them. I analyzed the pedagogic planning of the teachers and the mentors. And I decided, as Eugenio said, to rather than do a traditional evaluation, but based on the feelings and the concerns and the, um, the energy of the participants that that uh, joined the Teme project, I wanted to see how do we go further? How do we move on from here? And what advice could we give to these young musicians that will help them in their future careers? So basically I created a very short book, which is available now starting I think today uh, uh, on the Teme website. So you can download it, uh, use it as you like. Um, it's eight chapters, and I would like to very quickly go through these eight chapters for, for all of you. Um, however, I think reading it will be more interesting. There's also a number of annexes uh, to the book, which provides you with um, links to uh, educational programs, foundations, public grants, uh, and other documents that you may or may not need in the development of your careers as emerging musicians. Let's start with the first chapter, just very quickly. What I basically tried to do was to give some kind of useful advice. I thought it would best to talk directly to the young musician themselves. Sometimes I have a feeling that European policy, that our national cultural policies, they, they speak above the artist. They talk about something else. They talk about uh, administration, about money, about um, uh, career opportunities, but they don't talk about the real personal and emotional investment and concern that each emerging artist, and in this case, musicians have. So we start with project uh, with chapter number one. My, my first point is you have to know what you want. You have to know what it is that drives you. Uh, could you move on, Loren Lorenza? Thank you. Um, and just a couple of quick uh, points here. Uh, basically, you have to clarify your personal mission that vanity is not sufficient. It's not enough to know that I want to be seen and loved. One needs to know also what you want to do, not only which instrument you want to play, but what are your goals. And finally, and this is the new part and the part that entered into the Teme project, this question of entrepreneurship, how you monetize your skills. This is called cultural entrepreneurship. I, of course, asked myself the question, should every artist become also an entrepreneur? I'm not sure of this, but I think that we need to have these skills. We have to understand the world and the context that we're living in. Next, please, Lorenza. Chapter two is knowing not only what you want, but also why you want it. Um, this is, of course, very important because you have to be motivated by something. You have to be driven by something. And I found that many of the art artists were driven by their love for music, but they didn't know or understand fully yet what music actually means to the world around us. Lorenza, thank you. Um, so your choice of what you decide to focus on will have an impact on the society around you. Some of us believe that music and education is very important. Some of us believe that excellence on the highest institutional level is the most important. Some of us want to make our music accessible to people that normally are not in the, the concert halls. Um, uh, I think in order to move forward on why you want, you need some help. And this is what role models, mentors, and coaches are all about. Because finally, in the end, to navigate in this very strange and interesting landscape called the Western society, you need a private compass. You need something that leads you. Thank you. Uh, number three, I'm sorry, if you could go back just. Yes, thank you. Uh, one more, yeah, okay. The third, uh, third chapter very quickly is understanding your own competences, weaknesses. 
And in order to do this, you have to be a very honest in your self-evaluation. And this is something that I found that uh, probably the participants had some difficulties with. If you could move to the next slide. They had some difficulties in defining their, their own weaknesses and the, um, and the methods that were used in terms of an honest self-evaluation and an honest self-development were the individual development plans, the IDPs, and MOOCs, a long list of MOOCs that was offered by TAME to people. MOOCs are um, online educational opportunities, so you can focus in your own time and in your own way. I think they're very useful. However, there are two balancing points here. One is arrogance. We believe we are more important or we are, that we are more specialized or more creative than we really are yet. And the first step to true self-development is a certain kind of humility that I have so much more to learn. Next. Thank you. Mapping the context, of course, this is really important for any uh, emerging musician or uh, cultural entrepreneur. You have to know the context you're in. What, what is the market? What are the grants? What are the opportunities? What are the obstacles? It's, it's really confusing sometimes to know as a musician that you have to be involved, that you have to be good at all of these different things. Um, uh, but I don't think it's important that we are masters of all of these things but that we need to understand the context that we're living in. So you design your map. Where am I going? Where can I find funding for my research, for my practice? And finally, where are my job opportunities? So um, of course, funding for the music world has been historically very um, uh, sh shifting from patronage uh, in uh, uh, Florence or Venice years ago to public funding. Uh, something that we've become used to, but which is not so sure it can at any time change to a dominant art market that is commercial and the buying, uh, buying and, and selling of performances, tickets, and other musical products. We have to understand this context in order to understand where we place ourselves as, as emerging musicians uh, in the landscape. Next. Chapter five uh, focuses on the transnational dimension. Uh, the transnational dimension is probably the most important aspect of music, uh, music moves Europe. Um, it's uh, music, uh, as Eugenio described to us earlier before, music moves Europe is a very important part of the culture of the Creative Europe program, um, focusing on development of music. And this is also focusing on the development of intercultural competence, the capacity to be flexible, and also, let's say another door into collaboration on a European level are the European networks. Uh, there are many, uh, there will be a list on the website and I think all of you can find it. Thank you, no, it's okay. Thank you, Lorenzo, number six. Chapter six is the capacity to survive. This is the, the, the capacity to adapt is equal to survival if we are not quickly flexible. So as musicians, we cannot just get fixed into a certain kind of employment silo, uh, just as we cannot be fixed in a certain kind of music only. I think we need to have a capacity to adapt, but adaptation is not assimilation. It doesn't mean that we doing what they want us to do. It means adapting so that we can do better what we want to do ourselves. So going back to number one, you have to know what you want in order to protect yourself from just becoming involved in a lot of things that are not your passion. So you have to educate yourself continuously. And then you have to go beyond survival. You have to actually be going to realize the actual projects that you want to realize. Seven, thank you. The capacity to take risks is what is innovation. And here is something that I think that in, uh, at a very early stage in your career as a musician, it's very easy to start to stop taking risks, to decide to play it careful, to play it, to, uh, to, to play, um, uh, uh, to not go over any, any limits, thinking that this will somehow help you. And in fact, this might just lead to a kind of inaction. You get stuck in something. So develop routines that are useful for you, but not routines that block you. And finally, the capacity to take risks this can really only be done in a team. And I think that uh, Igor mentioned it earlier uh, very well, the importance of teamwork, especially in orchestras and music groups, 
um, uh, it's the trust and the support of your colleagues around you that allow you to have the courage to take risks. And finally, the eighth chapter, future educational needs. There are any number of ways that a young musician can try to develop their, their capacities. Um, if you go to the next slide, uh, the, these future edu educational needs uh, can be fulfilled in several ways. And I think that there are some new ways developing in Europe through formal lear uh, informal learning and non-formal learning. So for example, peer learning. This is what happened during the Teme uh, project when the participants went to Camarino or to Trieste, they spent two weeks together and they learned not only from the teachers and mentors that they had, but also from each other. Uh, another opportunity is something we call task shadowing. Um, so if you want to learn something about cultural entrepreneurship, don't try to do it all by yourself. Go and do an apprenticeship or an internship at some place and follow someone, a producer, uh, a composer, a, a director, or even a marketing person in order to understand how their work functions. And finally, of course, there's no doubt, into, uh, digital competence. We need to have more digital competence. And there are lots and lots of um, further learning opportunities on the on, online uh, in, in the form of MOOCs and other ways that gives us this competence. We have to be able to know something about recording, making demos, uh, communicating, uh, preparing simple websites. I don't think we have to be experts at all of these things because when we really need to do some large scale project, we need expertise, we need marketers, we need producers, we need arrangers. Uh, but when we are working for ourselves, we need somehow to be able to have some small uh, elements, traces of these competencies that we can use to strengthen our musical careers. Um, so I just want to thank you. Actually, the, the, I think the book is probably much more interesting than my presentation. Uh, and I, I think it would be great if, uh, if you would, any of you who are here would download it uh, and um, use it as you like. Uh, and you can contact me whenever you want. It was really, really a pleasure to work with this team from Teme. And I am looking forward to any further uh, developments. Thank you very much.